Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm just going to drop a bunch of marker technique tips and tricks, mainly for fashion illustration, because that's my world drawing clothes on people using markers and or gouache or watercolor. And if you want a similar video like this one about watercolor, let me know in the comments. I know there's a bunch of you who are not into fashion. A lot of you are comic book or just general illustrators. Welcome. Everyone is welcome on my channel. Anyone who wants to learn and practice and grow as illustrators. Okay. So tip number one, if you find your marker streaking, just go over it a few times with another coat of the same marker. It's like when you have like one sheer layer and it's like slightly doubled over with another sheer layer, you're going to see where they overlap. So just kind of drop a like another layer of color down. When I shadow clothes, for the most part, I just use a darker color than the fabric because using a lot of grays kind of tends to like deaden the overall look. And so I like to use a darker, possibly a slightly duller, but still colored version of the base color, whether it's skin, hair, or fabric. And then I like to go over it with a third shadow color for the darkest shadows. And if I have time and I want to blend things out, I take the first color, the lightest color, and just kind of go over the edges of the shadow so it kind of blends in a little bit more. Now, another thing you can do is to shadow first. Drop in your shadows all over and as I did before, you can put in another darker color for your absolute darkest shadows. And again, I'm using three markers, very similar to each other, but just darker. And then I use the lightest color to be the base fabric color. If you're interested in learning marker techniques for shiny fabrics, I have a whole video about that, illustrating shiny fabrics. I'll drop that link in the description box. But this technique of shading first and then layering lighter colors on top, it kind of helps with the color cohesiveness so that when you are putting that lightest color on top of everything, you're putting like a tint of that lightest color on top of everything, kind of making sure you have like a nice color cohesion. They're all working together. One color doesn't look too green or too purple, but it all looks like in, they're in the same blue family. And this can be really useful if you are limited in your marker range a little bit. And you don't, I mean, these days it's really hard to leave the house for every little thing you want to buy. And so if you have a color that's a little bit off, this can be a nice technique to kind of mask any weird shade variations. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is gradients. People think that you can't do gradients with marker, that you are always going to get this kind of solid line, and there's only so much blending you can do. That's wrong. You can do gradients with marker. It does take a little bit of effort, but honestly, if you think about it, doesn't it take a little bit more effort to do grading with color pencil, watercolor, what have you? And the method is really the same as any other medium. You kind of have both colors that you want kind of fading into each other. And you're kind of going back and forth, back and forth. And you don't even need a colorless blender. I don't use colorless blenders. Don't bother. You, the thing with marker and gradients is you just have to work a little bit faster because it's going to dry out faster. So have both your markers handy have them make sure they're juicy markers okay you're not going to get the effect you want if one of them is drying out okay so test your markers get them both in hand get them both uncapped and in and make sure you've designated the space where you want the transition to happen and start lightly applying color 
And I'm deliberately using two colors that are really different from each other, like complementary colors like violet and yellow, to really show how you can get that transition across. And basically, you are going back and forth, back and forth very lightly. I go in strong with the yellow, the lighter color, to really blend in and drop that alcohol and soak up that paper. And yes, this is way easier to do on a thin paper like marker paper as opposed to cardstock or Bristol. Okay? So I'm really kind of grinding into that paper with the yellow dropping in a lot of alcohol and then just like tapping with my darker color, the lilac, and just kind of tapping it in and letting it blend in a little bit with that yellow. And then when I got that grade going on, I work on easier things like this darker yellow on top Kind of grading into the light yellow is much easier to do. But again, it's the same technique, kind of back and forth with those two colors and really being gentle with each color at the transition stage and getting in a little bit harder with the lighter color and softer with the darker color. And then here I'm going to go in with a much darker purple. That part is pretty easy. Now, once you have the transition gradient, if you're doing a dress like I'm illustrating on screen, you're gonna want shadows. And yeah, like since you did the whole dress in horizontal strokes to get that transition going, and if you noticed before when I was illustrating the other two outfits, I was using vertical strokes. If you put vertical strokes, the prominent stroke on this dress is gonna look a little bit weird. So yeah, you are gonna have to shadow using horizontal strokes. Be light, be careful, work slowly. And if you need to like kind of blend out the edges a little bit, yeah, feather them out a little bit. It is gonna look different, but you do want to kind of keep the, just really keep that gradient that's kind of like the strong, prominent feature of this dress. And you want to make sure that really comes through. Now, if you're wondering, why are you placing the shadows where you are? How do you know where to place your shadows? I have a video all about shadow placements on bodies, on different kinds of clothing. And uh, I will drop a link to that in the description box below. So. This was my mini tutorial on marker techniques. Let me know what you think of my mini tutorials I've been doing every third Tuesday of the month. Drop me your future mini tutorial video requests in the comments section below. Drop me your comments and questions as usual. Please like this video if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.